Hey there, and welcome to RAM's basics tutorial series. If you need more information about RAM, you can look a demo with our team using the link in the description. You can also create a free RAM account and use the templates below to draw along with me as we go through this tutorial. Let's dive in. In this tutorial, we're going to deep dive into parametric blocks in RAM. If you're just starting off with learning about blocks, I recommend starting with the different basic block tutorial and then joining us here. We're going to talk about how parametric blocks help you create a leaner, smarter block library that contains one definition that holds different variations of a block, different sizes with different repetitions. For example, a door that can be scaled super smoothly or a staircase that can be subtracted and added stairs. These are the two examples we'll deep dive into today. We're going to be able to do that without modifying geometry manually. And that's the whole magic of parametric blocks. So let's get started. In this tutorial, I'll explain how to use RAM's parametric blocks from the block library and also how to create your own parametric blocks or adapt blocks to being parametric. Let's start with option one of using RAM's parametric blocks. I've placed here two uh, examples of a parametric block and a non-parametric one. The first thing you'll know to distinguish between them is that the parametric one will have these handle grips and the regular one won't. If you're looking for those in your block library located on the top left, you can just write parametric blocks and RAN will pop up uh, the different parametric blocks that it includes. You'll also know that once you open the block family, you'll see this icon indicating this is a parametric block family. All right. So first of all, just to make the difference between a regular block to a parametric one very clear, you'll note that when you're using a regular block, you want to change its uh, dimensions. It may be distorted. For example, if we want to change the width, you can see that it kind of distorts the fold. Um, and the same thing for if you wanted to change the door frame. So this is really not the desired outcome we'd be wishing for. On the other hand, when we're working with a parametric block, it has these grips here that are built to help you change the block size proportionally. So you see that the width changes and the door fold adjusts as well. This is also the case for the frame. So in the parametric blocks, it won't distort the full block. It will just give you the option to stretch the frame nicely. So there are two ways to adjust the parametric blocks. Once you select it, like we just did, you can drag uh, the grips and change its size either for its width or its frame. And you can also do this by entering a value. You'll note that once your block is selected on the right, you have the different options that are tailored to specific blocks. Uh, for doors, we have the door width and frame, and this can change for staircases or furniture pieces uh, and so on and so forth. Some of the blocks have predefined dimensions. So you'll find here in the door width, there is a drop down where you can select a different uh, size door. So for example, we can go for a door of 58 centimeters and you see that changed accordingly. I can also select this again and then let's add a frame size. Let's do 30 size frame and this will change accordingly. In some block instances where there are predefined dimensions, if you enter a value, it will just round up your value to the closest dimension defined in the incremental values. I want to show you how to edit a staircase, but I want to also importantly note that each of these blocks also have a representation in side and top views. So if I copy this door, for example, in uh, here and here, I can select it and go to its definition to place it in top or side view as well. This is also going to be parametric. So let's take a look. There you go, the door in front view and easily grip on it to change its width or height. And the same goes for side view. All right, let's get to stairs. So as you've noticed, all of these have grips as well. Let's explore them. The grips for staircases will normally have the count of stairs. So when you have U-shaped stairs or other, this is super dynamic. You can also change the stairs width and this will apply to um, each side of the staircase. And also this area can be adjusted as well. A note about stairs, if you wanna change the individual size of a stair, you'd use the scale tool for that. So for example, we have a staircase right now. I'm just gonna grab the distance tool and see its width. It's um, 30 centimeters. If you want to change all these stairs to 27 centimeters, for example, you can go ahead and grab the scale tool. 
Now select the stair and input the value. This will change all the stair sizes and then you can easily again apply the drag the grip to add remove stairs and then change their width as well. This can also of course apply to the staircase in top and front view and the different heights. So for example, the height of the stair is 16 centimeters. Let's say we want to change this to 19. Grabbing the scale tool, applying the desired distance and then change to 19. Then again, now I can edit this easily with the parametric grips. All right, these are two examples of how you can use RAM's parametric blocks. What happens when you want to create your own blocks and turn them into parametric ones? Let's explore. In this example I'm going to show you, I'll check out how we take a normal door, the one we were looking at at the beginning, and converting it into a parametric door. I invite you to also see our documentation where you have step-by-step -step instructions of how to create parametric blocks for other use cases. So the first thing is to start off with a block. So if you're creating a completely new block, you just want to remember to block it. Once you have your block and you're ready to turn it into a parametric block, hover over it, right click and go to edit in isolation. You see that this will open this um, edit bar and I just have to basically start off with selecting an action. We have two parametric block actions for now, which are the stretch action and the array action. I'm gonna demonstrate the stretch action today. Again, check out our documentation to learn more about the array action as well. Once you select one of the actions, you have this uh, CTA, so the brand tagline telling you what's the next step you should take. It's place the first point of a segment parameter. This is asking me what's the segment I want the block to be dynamic for. So in this case, I'm looking to make the door width dynamic. I'm going to select one point here and the other point here. You'll see that the CTA changes. It's asking me to find the parameter point associated with the actions. In other words, it's asking me where to place the blue arrow that then you can drag. I want this to be located right here. And now it's changed again to ask me to select the entities I want to add to the selection set. In this case, I want to add the other items that are gonna be moving accordingly, which are the arc and the door frame on this side. Now I can click on done. The next CTA is choose the first point of the active area. So which active area, meaning the one that's gonna be dynamic and move, I want to select. And I'm gonna go like that. All right, let's test our block uh, as the first step. And we can see here we have the grip and yep, it seems to move pretty smoothly. But there's one thing we wanna do before we move forward, which is make sure that all the props are tagged properly. I'm gonna double click this block and let's select the parameter we've added. We'll see that here on the bottom right, we can name it. So let's name this segment parameter door width. And we can already see that we have an action tied to it, uh, the stretch action. Let's edit this one as well and name it. This is important because we're actually gonna be adding the leaf as well. And let's click on done. Now we won't see a change, but we know that we already have uh, the organized uh, and named parameters. Now let's go ahead to step two and create the leaf as a parametric object. I'll double click this, select the stretch action. And this time, instead of adding a new parameter, I'm gonna select the one that we created and its point. You can see the CTA here change to add a selection set. Selecting these entities and done. Now we're gonna choose the first point of the active area, which is this one, and done. Now again, let's tidy up this parameter block. I'm gonna select the parameter that we've added and you'll see here that another stretch object or option was added. Let's edit this one. This one will be called door leaf. And we also want to set the angle for it, which is 90 degrees. 
Now, another thing we should do is go back to the frame width, edit, and then include the insertion point of this door. This way it will punch a hole within the ring wall. Then done. Now let's test our block. So I'm going to select it. And once I drag the grip point, you can see that my leaf and my opening are correspondingly adapting. So this is how to take a regular block and convert it into a parametric block. Obviously there are multiple use cases, doors, staircases, furniture, and more and more. So we invite you to also check out our documentation about parametric blocks. I'm going to link that in the description below. So you'll have here other than, you know, the exhaustive overview of parametric blocks, a dedicated segment to how to create your own blocks with a few other use cases and the array command and more. So good luck with parametric blocks. Let us know if you have any questions or need any help. Thanks for watching this tutorial. If you have any more questions, you're welcome to book a demo with our team by using the link in the description. You can also join our community and of course, subscribe to our YouTube channel to get more videos like this. Have a good one.